<laughs> Today on Toy Geeks, we're going to share our favorite Halloween toys of all time. We're going to share some uh, of our latest toy hauls, as well as maybe some toy news thrown in there as well. So everyone, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Everybody, and welcome to Toy Geeks. My name is Jay, and with me as always, John. John, how are you doing tonight? Fantastic. How are you, Jay? I am doing well on uh, this uh, last Sunday, last podcast before All Hallows Eve this uh, this coming Saturday. It's a weekend Halloween, which is completely wasted on 2020. I know. Uh, it's such a bummer. I'm, I'm no. kind of disappointed. My neighborhood on a Saturday, it's like, from what I hear, because we haven't mm-hmm. had a Saturday yet, you know, yeah, five or 600 trick-or-treaters expected. Uh-huh. Because on, on a Wednesday, we had like 425, I think. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it was nuts. insane. Um, but not this year. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're trying to figure it out. Our neighborhood's doing a trunk or treat. So mm-hmm. uh, they're kind of blocking off a section. Everyone's going to like pull up their car, set up their trunks and then do that. Uh, yep. with masks but still it's the uh it's not yeah it's it's a well 2020 sucks so of course the uh one saturday halloween that we get in a decade is also in 20 <laughs> just how it goes uh but uh at least we're here uh together on the internet to uh wax poetic about some of our favorite halloween toys of all time really excited for this, this is our first list show uh, in a while, uh, since yeah. we're doing these live shows, I think so. Um, maybe, uh, but, uh, excited to do that later on today. Um, really excited for your toy halls. I, I went to the North Carolina toy swap, so that's where my toy halls will be coming from this week. So excited for that. And, uh, there was one bit of toy news I did want to cover, but, uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but before we do that, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out my most recent video, uh, on the channel. <laughs> uh, basically, you know, if you watched last week's toy geeks, I talked about getting the, uh, wave one of U- super seventh ultimate teenage mutant ninja turtle figures. And so, uh, as promised, I made a video kind of going into, uh, why I loved uh, or love uh, the Super 7 figures a lot more than the NECA Tune figure. So uh, check it out. It's it's not so much a straight review, but a bit of an autobiographical story on why I dig it more. But, uh, you know, luckily, uh, you you loaned me uh, your Motu Classics figures, which mm-hmm. I'll be doing a Versus video with, which I haven't gotten to yet. But uh, I was like, oh, sweet. I still have those there. I could I could use them in the video. So uh, <laughs> your, your He-Man and Skeletor classics, which are originally, I think those were mine, right? Did mm-hmm. you uh, uh, I, I think I have two Skeletors. I don't know which one you have, okay. so it could be. <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, they made an appearance uh, in that episode as well. But it was kind of, it was neat to see the classics He-Man with the uh, so Ultimates Raphael because to me it was like, what is the scale difference? And I, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, mm-hmm. later in the video, I had the vintage He-Man and, and Raphael with the now classics He-Man and Ultimates uh, Raphael. And they were kind of scaled about the same height difference. Uh, right. Vintage and uh, those current. So I know some people were kind of uh, spooked or maybe, uh, uh, you know, didn't really dig the scale. But in terms of if you want that Masters of Universe classic scale, which is what the Ultimates is now, it is proportionally in scale the same way the vintage uh, turtles and uh, He-Man figures went. So mm-hmm. a, a thing of note uh, for the <laughs> geeks out there. All right. Go into the chat saying hi. We got PD Doves in the house. Hey, oh, what's up, PD? KJ Smith. Sup, peeps? Uh, Jay Griffiths, uh, in regards to uh, our 2020 Halloween plans, yes, it is not the same. It is not. Uh, KJ Smith says, I live in Salem, Massachusetts, the Halloween capital of the world, and they're trying to shut it down this year. Too many people going to show up. I know. It's hard to shut down in Salem. Yep, yep exactly. 
Uh, Master Hoarder, evening, everyone. Hello, Master Hoarder. Welcome to the show. What's up, Master? Uh, 2020 is zero out of five stars. Would not recommend. I agree, <laughs> Jay. I agree, Jay Griffiths. Uh, I just pre-ordered Waves 2 and 3 of the Super 7 TMNT Ultimates. Uh, yes, so I pre-ordered Wave 2, and then mutual friend of John and I, uh, James, who is a toy dealer and orders direct from Super 7, uh, I went halvesies on uh, a full shipper or vendor case of waves three and four, um, which I don't know if that was a wise choice or not. I don't know. But so I'll, I'm basically getting four figures in waves three and four. Um, but you have to basically drop, I don't know, like 80% of the total retail or total retail. It, it wasn't cheap. So I think it was like 300 something bucks for four sets of the four figures. So my hope is, you know, I keep a set for me and then sell the others and maybe break even. That's the hope. Fingers crossed. I'll uh, take a set of each. Hey, hey, there we go. All right. Halfway there. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see. Adam Smedberg says Bebop is supposed to be ridiculously big. Yeah, Bebop and Rocksteady look huge. They do. Yes. Um, and Muckman does, too. Uh, and the Baxter Stockman's really big as well. Um, so uh, I really dig, and I think we talked about it a little bit last week on uh, Toy Geeks, but uh, they seem to kind of do one big kind of monster in each wave. Yeah. And, and they're each huge figures. So uh, really, really cool. Uh, Better Filling Films in the house. Hello. 1 a.m. here. Woo. Woo. Where is here? Yeah, because... London's pa more past 1 a.m., right? I don't know if they adjust with the time change or whatever. But uh, I mean, oh, I'm going to pull up old London town. <laughs> I don't know where it would be 1 a.m. Is that? um? No, it is. OK, so he's in London or or somewhere on Greenwich Mean Time. Let us know. Let us know in the chat. Worldwide. Uh, worldwide. Going worldwide. Worldwide. Like Pitbull. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, John, before we get into toy hauls, I did want to mention a bit of toy news uh, that came out today. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, now, have you seen uh, the news with this new TMNT set from Playmates Toys today? I did in the in the um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, it's not a party wagon, but it's sort of the party wagon idea, right? Yeah, so I'm going to close this out here. It looks like looking at Bleeding Cool. Uh, but yeah, so they are kind of repackaging and kind of similar to what it did with that Comic-Con exclusive uh, set, which was a, kind of a cool set. Uh, yeah. I, again, I think we both talked about how, why do we need another set of these turtles, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But the box was cool. The box is definitely cool. Uh, but yeah, so oh, this is kind of a small picture. Why don't we get a big picture? But anyway, they are basically, geez Louise, bleeding cool, chill out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna go to Walmart. Too many ads, bleeding cool. All right, so uh, this is the set, and yeah, so it has kind of April's um Volkswagen van, I think from issue three of the original comics. I think this one, yeah. Was appearance uh but yeah so then um they basically have these turtles being re-released these have been released before i think i got the uh michelangelo when it came out it's honestly not that great of a figure if anybody yeah. has out there it's kind of a boring figure and they've done a four pack too right yeah um so i even more so don't want these <laughs> But cool for those that want them. I mean, it's it's the, the NECA version of those comic book turtles are still the best versions of those that have ever been made. And that was over a decade ago. But the one thing that kind of made me wish maybe they took a different take with it is what they did with the Shredder and the Splinter. They kind of have this cool redecoed version of the original 88 Splinter and Shredder, but mm -hmm. decoed to look like their comic book counterparts. and. I think that's really cool. And I'm almost like, why didn't they just repaint? They've they've re-released those dang 88 turtles a thousand times. This was your chance to actually give us a cool new deco, make them look like comic book versions. Or even like black and white with just a red bandana or something. I don't know. Yeah. That would have been so much cooler because these figures honestly are not that great. Um, 
but I, I so yeah if if they would have gone all turtles but like the 88 versions but repainted i would have been all over it because i kind of i kind of dig these two versions even though the shredder looks really weird <laughs> oh, i think it's kind of cool yeah, yeah. it's a, another attempt at another box set yeah but what what do you think? Do you think I, I'm crazy for saying like they should just they should have like just repainted the '88 turtles? Yeah, yep. put the '88 turtles on that style card back. That'd be cool. You know, you know the splinter cool. looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's neat. I mean, he's got really heavy eyelashes. I don't even see that online right now, people. But <laughs> but um, but yeah. Anyway, that's that. It's kind of cheap though. Forty bucks. And again, the box is cool. Yeah, not a bad price, considering how much the other box set was. Yeah, the other one was like a hundred and something bucks. So why? Yeah, what's what's the? Maybe there's a shorter, smaller run. I don't know, but still, uh, maybe this was going to be the New York Comic Con set or something. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but still, forty bucks. It is tempting. I mean, you're getting six figures for forty bucks in this packaging. The math. It'll be good for Christmas. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's that. Uh, I'm gonna stop the screen share here. Uh, let's see. Uh, the figures look great, but the articulation is trash. I still need the shredder and splinter, though. Uh, yeah, that's that was the one thing. The, the articulation was really bad on those uh, comic book style figures. Uh, Better filling films, Birmingham. So there you go. Um, and then Otis the Bulldog, Scareglow. Maybe on the list tonight. <laughs> he is in the thumbnail artwork. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, which figure from Wave Three in April two twenty twenty one for Motu are you most excited for? For Motu, oh Wave Three, um, probably Zodak. Is Zodak going to be counted as Wave Three? He's not like. I think he's kind of. Wave it's kind three. of in between. It's almost like a two point five. Yeah, but that's it's not coming out till twenty twenty one. So I yeah, think yeah. counts. I'm I'm really excited for Zodak. I'm a, I'm a low key Zodak fan. I really dig Zodak. I'm uh, really excited for Clamp Champ. Oh yeah, I mean, but that's a deluxe figure. I feel like it's kind of cheating, John. Mm -hmm. Cheating the game a little bit. Uh, so I'd say Ram Man, but he's deluxe too. Exactly. See, that's cheating. You can't do that. What's the normal normal release figure that you're most excited for? Probably Trapper. No, that's wave two. Um, uh, Triclops. All right, fine. I guess I'll give it to you. Uh, Jay Grimace, <laughs> give us the 2003 figures in the comic book look. That'd be cool. They haven't really re-released re those 2003 figures all that much compared to the mm -hmm. 80 girls. Um, Nightmare 10880. I think that Playmates is just doing whatever they can to keep the license so Nickelodeon is ready for the newest incarnation of the Turtles. Uh, yeah, totally agree. I mean, mm -hmm. I I don't know what kind of deal they have. I, I don't know about the Playmates. So they've had the license since the beginning um, and have had a pretty strong grip on that license. It's kind of crazy that some of these other companies recently have been able to start making adult collector uh, versions of the characters. But um, yeah. Uh, love Zodak. With you, Master Hoarder. Uh, Adam Smedberg, Ninjor. Oh, Ninjor is, looks pretty cool. I forgot about Ninjor. Um, and then uh, Otis agrees with me. Zodak is a, is a wave three. So, yeah, my pick for the win. FTW. <laughs> Can anybody else hear an echo from me? I'm getting a really bad echo again. Oh, I don't You hear don't hear it? it? And last time, the, the commenters let us know. Yeah. Weird, but it's only myself. Hmm. Uh, you can drop out and drop, come back in real quick. See if that like clears it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let me try that. You sound great on my end, though. Oh, well, cool. thanks. Oh, everyone's saying echo. <laughs> Dang it! What the hell? All right, let me drop out. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm gonna actually then bring in a recording on GarageBand for the podcast. Because that's, I don't know why it's doing that. That is weird. Technical difficulties, folks, I apologize. Um, so let me bring this up here. Anyways. 
All right, perfect. John is back. Let's see if we cleared out the echo. Hello. 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 I think I'm all right. I can't hear it now. It's so weird. You sound clear as a bell to me. No echo. That's so strange. Because it only started last week. Yeah, that is very weird. Um, but hopefully that takes care of it. Uh, I just started doing a backup recording, so that way we have uh, good audio for the podcast version, because the last one kind of got ruined. I'm still trying to fix. But anyway, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, sweet. Before we get into halls, just one last cool little thing that I saw on the internet that I then did to my own Skeletor. Uh, so I saw somebody combo the Undertaker uh, figure with Skeletor. Oh, that looks awesome. It's like Skeletor yeah. with pants. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so wow. I spoke out the, the Skeletor feet. And this is obviously the Undertaker uh, legs, uh, torso, and then his upper body, and then his hands. Um, and then I put his little Skeletor loincloth there. But with the purple as the paint for, you know, his outline for the skeleton, unlike uh, Scareglow. Uh, yeah. Skeletor. Cool. Yeah, I, I was like, that's cool. That'd be fun. My my kids are really getting into because I I I play Skeletor, so I do like you know the straight up, almost Honda days commercial version of Skeletor. Yeah. Skeletor, bungling red brain, driving a CRV. First you he man. So uh, they they just keep they just laugh hysterically. So that's awesome. So we've been having fun with that. All right. Uh. Let's move along here. It is time for the momentous occasion of every single episode of Toy Geeks. And uh, that is none other than our recent toy hauls. Uh, John, do you want to go first today? I feel like I may have went first last time. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll jump in. Okay. Uh, well, I think I uploaded the picture. No, I didn't. All right. I'll start with my others first. Okay. So um, my Walmart had re-upped on the... Um, McFarlane um, metal figures. So I finally found the uh, the Grim Knight Batman. Yes. And then uh, Dawnbreaker as well. Boom. Dang. So I finished up that wave. Oh, I, love, I just got to start hunting. The, uh, the ring attachment. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. They're, they're uh, bat constructs. <sighs> the, the color on this thing just pops so much. And it comes with a pretty good uh, flight stand, too, that snaps on his leg. Oh, dang. Yeah, that's nicer than the Superman one. That one looks taller. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's a great figure. And I really liked the um, the DC Direct Batman as Green Lantern during the, uh, the Jeff Johns run of Green Lantern mm -hmm. when it was Blackest Night and uh, that whole storyline. And they did the Batman as Green Lantern figure. And I really liked it just because of the colors. Yeah. But I really think this one, this one beats that figure. It looks like it. Oh man, I hope I get to see one of those in the wild, and I and then I can make the choice. Yeah, my my Walmart got in. It had to be three or four cases. Oh wow! Because there was, there was like seven or eight pegs completely full, front to back, um, with four or five figures. In the morning, I went back to that Walmart that night. Yeah, everything was gone, all of it. Dang. But keep in mind, my Walmart still has not changed the $15 uh, Wonder Woman Wait, knock, you still uh, got clearance. that 15 bucks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the oh all the McFarlane figures, they have not changed from $15. Oh, my God. You've got a honey hole over there. <laughs> Holy moly. And this, the, uh, the Grim Knight Batman is pretty cool. It's if Batman used guns and he is, like, completely loaded up. Grenade launcher, Uzis, you name it. It's Texas Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is cool. Wow. In, in the storyline, Bruce Wayne, when he sees his parents get shot by Joe Chill, mm -hmm. like he just goes and, uh, as from what I remember, he just shoots Joe Chill, and that's where he becomes like a, a gun maniac. You know, in yeah, yeah. in that universe, you know, because it's one of the 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 metal universes or whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. So that was that. And then I got this fantastic superpowers collection. Oh, the Kenner stuff. You you know how like a sweet spot superpowers mm -hmm. is and then, um boom. I I have a I have a complete collection. It's right there. Mm -hmm. 
and even then, and I have every single one of these figures complete. Even then, like, see, I'm like, well, maybe I could use another set. Maybe it'll, I mean, no. <laughs> um, I, that's how much I. They're just so freaking cool. Like, where, like, who had a collection like this? eBay guy on oh, eBay. I, he had it. He put it up and buy it now with an inc- a crazy price. Do you do you feel comfortable sharing? Maybe. Um. A, sure. A uh. Two two twenty five. What? Yeah. Oh my! And, um, the damn is like almost worth that much. Yeah, I already sold them. <laughs> wow. For one fifty. Uh yeah. So yeah, you got a buck fifty for Shazam. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samurai is what a hundred bucks still, maybe ninety bucks. Uh yeah, like a hundred. He his tunic is a little stained. Okay. Um, okay. But I mean, Brainiac has his arm. Um, arm broken. Un- it was broken and repaired. Okay. But it was a it was a good repair, and yeah, I, yeah. I noted that. And that thing yeah. it's that was the first one to sell, actually. But the paint on all of them is really, really nice. They Shazam like- was like untouched, like super, super mint. Yeah, they look fantastic. Holy moly. And the Clark Kent, too. The Clark Kent's really clean, too. Yeah, super clean. <laughs> and immediately after, you know, I bought it. It was uh, I just seen it. I seen it right when it was listed. I paid immediately. And then the guy sent me a message back and he's like, a lot of people are messaging me. They're really upset They, you know, they're trying to, like, make a deal, <laughs> you know, cancel mine. <laughs> but he's the one that set the buy it now price. I don't yeah. know. You got to be quick to the draw. So you got a looks like a toy biz freeze Riddler, and is it a yep. toy biz penguin, penguin. With, a, with a Kenner umbrella? That, that is the uh, the toy biz umbrella with the missile that shoots out of the top. Oh, you're right. It's just it's angled in a certain way. Yep. Uh, and, and then toy what, biz two face. Yeah. And uh, what was the other toy biz? Um, who was it? Was it uh, Wonder Woman? No, that that's the nope. Powers Wonder Woman. Was it? Rock? I think no. That was it. That was all the toy biz. And then the Joker was missing his mallet, and the guy messaged me and he said he found it and mailed it to me. Jeez! So this guy's just doing charity work then. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But if you're listening, thank you very much. <laughs> that's that's a great pickup that is a great pickup i i just i love just the colors pop the the sculpting is fantastic the paint is crisp the paint mm-hmm. maps on those things are just unreal and when you find ones that are still in nice shape like what kenner did with that line is incredible yeah super nice wow i'm only keeping batman and robin out of that set because the the robin is is really mint that, that robin looks brand new like it was just taken mm-hmm. off, the, off the card 200 and what 250 bucks Two, 225 Two, 225 oh <sighs> and that guy only probably got like 190 bucks out of that 2250 um yeah after fees and i think it was free shipping too dang Woo! that's a good pickup that's a very good pickup uh <laughs> uh Todd Smith, whoa those are awesome uh also geek day live thanks so much for the castle grace school video my me and my dad wouldn't have known about that pre-order well you're welcome oh um and uh for in case uh, merman and wave three go up too um yeah for sure if if i'm around and i can do it quickly absolutely um i will say i've seen like the comparison photos of merman and the merman from the lords of power set and mm-hmm. then the retail release. Uh, and I'm so thankful that I pre-ordered the Lords of Power set, which I I don't know if that is, so it was sold out for a time and they put it back up for higher prices on bigbadtoystore.com. So yeah. I don't know um, if that's still a thing, but here is the the comparison. Um, the Lords wow. of Power one, it's, it's night and day. I'm so, because this version of Merman is my favorite. Uh, so really pumped. For that version of Merman. But I'll, I'll still get the uh, stink or face Merman. Yeah. And I, I'd be willing to bet that they'll release the Lords of Power figures single carded. Maybe with a paint variation. Mm-hmm. Because they got the tooling made for it. You know. Yeah. And th- they did it with She-Ra. You know. She-Ra had an exclusive for PowerCon. And now she's coming out on a single card. Yep. 
but you can just see the sculpting difference. Like again, I, and people kind of griped about the price. It is an expensive set. It's like 200 and something bucks. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but gosh, like look at the, the, I hope, I hope it's this crisp and really nice in person, but yeah, the, the detail is night and day. It's, it's beginning sculptor compared to expert sculptor. <laughs> well, and the rumor is maybe the horseman did a lot of the sculpting on these, this set. Cause it mm -hmm. like, if you have the classics version of merman, like that's straight out of that classics head sculpt. Oh yeah, absolutely. It looks like they just shrunk it down. Like they, they scanned mm -hmm. it and just shrunk it. Yep. Um, so anyway, really excited for that. Uh, all right. Uh, is it my, it's my turn. Okay. Yep. So uh, I went to the NC toy underground NC underground toy swap, uh, which, you know, in the world where toy shows and comic cons aren't really happening. Uh, this is one of the kind of few things that I, and probably most collectors feel comfortable going to, uh, because generally it's people kind of set up outside either in a parking lot or just a, a vacant lot next to a parking lot. And they kind of just have a table and they put a bunch of toys out and then people kind of bring extras that they have and try to swap, but also, you know, buy toys too. And uh, it was a lot of fun. This time it was uh, for those that are uh, in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. It was in Cary at Ultimate Comics. Um, and it was it was a, a fun little show. It's maybe, I don't know, like 10 people, maybe 11 set up and had some stuff uh, there. Nothing like the like a real toy show or anything like that. But still, it was fun to get out. Uh, met Gary there. Um, and then uh, also uh, Luis, uh, who we, we've seen at toy shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so that so that was good. I picked up a couple things. Um, but if you've been on my Instagram page, you saw that there was a collector there that showed up in a DeLorean, like a straight up DeLorean, uh, which I... <laughs> I am obsessed with that car as as a lot of geeks are. Um, but I was I was super jealous. Like, talk about geek street cred. <laughs> Showing up to a, a toy swap in a in a John DeLorean, um, a drivable it, DeLorean. It looks in like it's in good shape. It is like so uh we were uh we we're Gary and I were just like leaving, and then Gary's like, is that a DeLorean? And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I don't, I've never seen one just in the wild. God, for I, I, uh, where I grew up in one of the I live in a lot of different places in San Diego, but the last few years I lived there, I live in Santee and in the neighborhood I grew up in, somebody had a DeLorean uh, and you just drive it around as his daily driver. And I used to like just bug him all the time. Um, but so this is the first one I like saw just out in the wild, not like a, a converted time machine. Uh, and yeah, he was just like picking up toys him and his girlfriend, they got their toys and then just like got in the car and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Living the dream right there. Uh, so anyways, um, I was just really, really jealous. One day I'll own one of those cars. Uh, Better Feeling Film says a guy around the corner from me has two DeLoreans. Two? Two? In Birmingham? You know, I think I, there's a guy on YouTube that has like two DeLoreans in the UK. I wonder if it's the same guy. It's It's got to be. What are the chances? Well, the thing is, they made these in Ireland. So mm -hmm. maybe there's a lot in the UK because I think when the factory closed, there's a whole bunch sitting over there. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> People I'm, just walked up and took one home. Yeah, it's like that's wild conjecture. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, he says, yep, yeah, it's that guy. Okay, yeah, I think he converted one into a time machine. And the other one, he just is a normal DeLorean, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, so anyway, really cool. Uh, I, and he, I saw him as I was driving when he was getting in the car. I was like, oh, man, love your car, dude. So <laughs> he was the, the king, the king of the toy swap. That's uh, awesome. Uh, all right. So my now I put this Bambi cover here to try and hide the reveals a little bit. Uh, but first up, I uh, got another Mighty Morphin Power Ranger figure. Got the blue ranger. So now I'm cool. the um, pink and yellow ranger, which I'm kind of ticked because I saw I was in New York uh, visiting my wife's family and there was a yellow ranger at a Walmart there and I passed it up because I was like, I don't want to drag this around. <laughs> uh, and then uh, our mutual friend Luis, um, he had the Macho Man uh, Masters of the WWE Universe figure. Um, 
card is kind of big up, but I'm an opener. And this one kind of has extra man at arms shin guards as mm -hmm. well as a bigger version of the hammer. So, uh, this is Macho Man. So, That's cool. Here, got that one. And then, uh, also got the Beskar armor Mandalorian. Very nice. And, uh, so, yeah, so those are my pickups. Successful, successful trip to the toy swap. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Again, it's not it's not anything to write home about, but it's it's a fun time out. And again, I don't know if it's going to be again. Luckily, I got this for retail, like everything I got for retail, which was really mm -hmm. everybody that was there. Um, but uh, excited to get this one because I just I didn't want to have to like hunt for it. You know, I didn't want to like stress about finding one. Um, I have the, the first version. Um, so mm -hmm. they wanted to pick up uh, this one. And it looks great. It looks great in hand. So, all right, John, time to get into it. All right. Are we ready? It's Halloween time. Halloween, Halloween. <laughs> all right, it is time to get into our main topic of the day, our favorite Halloween toys. Definitely let us know in the chat, maybe some of your favorites as we go through our list. Uh, John and I have prepared five favorite Halloween toys. Uh, we will go kind of round robin style uh, from five to one. And uh, I just realized now, as I said, that, I was like, I don't think I rank these in my head. So I probably <laughs> do that. Yeah. Uh, and I, when I sent you the list, I said no particular order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think I pretty much know how I'd want to rank them. Uh, right. but, it, uh, but that's how we will go about it. Um, and then we will. Um, hmm, I might. I might delete that. All right. So uh, moving along, uh, John, do you want to go first? Sure. Sure. Right. Well. My, I'm going to start with number one instead of five because this was the this was the first one on the list that I sent you. Okay. Um, I don't own this anymore, but it was the the NECA Hellraiser um, Cenobite Lair box set. <laughs> and this set, I know you're not you're not really a horror guy. No, I am not. I don't <laughs> like scary stuff. And even this, finding the images for this, I was like, you know, <laughs> the the set is. It's so awesome. I've had, I've owned two of these, uh, but the prices on them have skyrocketed so much, you know, cause this was a Spencer gifts exclusive, um, way back in the day. And the, the price, like, I think I, they were originally like 50 bucks or something like that. Yeah. And now they're going like upwards of 400. There's some, Ooh. there's some out there buy it now, like 600. Oh my God. Um, but at the time, it was the only way to get the female Cenobite. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think that, you know, Pinhead has been out a million times, but yep. Butterball and Chatterer, I don't know if they've come out single carded um, after that first series. Yeah. But anyway, the set itself is is crazy. The, the, the organs and entrails that it comes with that you hang from the chains because mm -hmm. it comes with like a sort of a plastic girder that yep. hangs above um the walls and the, the way that they did the walls with the the busted away plaster and the the wooden slats it's just like what happens in the movie when the puzzle box is opened and the room darkens and the, the that's just how the walls sort of turn they they mm -hmm. captured that that scene so well with that room yeah and that it has this weird thing that that hangs off of a chain it's like a wooden pillar and it's just uh body parts and just gross stuff but there's also uh frank's face is on the floor <laughs> from from the first hellraiser movie yeah it's for any hellraiser fan it it was such a treat like NECA did such a good job on this set and i i hope they re-release re this you know because they're they're sort of getting into re-releasing the the old stuff again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh sleepy eyed robot asks McFarlane. Uh no, but it is of that era, right? Of that kind of yeah, I want to say it was probably like between 2000 and 2003, mm -hmm. give or take. It, maybe. Um, it was one of the early things when they, they first started to get into movie figures, when they did like the uh real toys and the cult classic figures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
No, I mean, again, I don't like horror. I don't like slasher flicks. I'm scaredy cat. So, <laughs> but I do appreciate what it is, and it does look like a really scary set, um, but too scary for my blood. Uh, so that should probably set you up that my picks today are not going to be all that scary <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Even, That's all right. Even like tangentially related to <laughs> Halloween. Uh, and Jay Griffith says, I don't know if you call it a Halloween toy, but the Supernaturals. The, that's my kind of speed of Halloween toy. And I do think you can count those. Those are supernatural. Yeah, because it's a, they're ghostly. Yeah, exactly. That, that counts. Yeah. Put that on a Halloween shelf. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think I think it's a, a very cool set. But 600 bones. Woo. They're, yeah, it's, it's very crazy. Because didn't they just re-release the Hellraiser not too long ago? Uh, they just they did Ultimate Pinhead. Ultimate Pinhead, yeah, yeah. There's been quite a few pinheads. Yeah. Um. All right, that's a that's a good one. All right, my my number five is kind of a fun pick, and uh, it is a movie that I loved as a kid. And it is kind of one of those films that you play, or at least in my house, every Halloween season. And this toy line was kind of a funky toy line because there was a cartoon show that probably was what the kids were more into. But the toy line, unlike Kenner's Real Ghostbusters that focused on the cartoon, the toy line for some reason focused on the movie and not the cartoon. Uh, and that was the Kenner Beetlejuice. There we go. Don't and, say it more than don't say it more than one more time. <laughs> uh, and you know, for me, what was kind of cool is you had these interchangeable heads, uh, and they did different things like this one. This one kind of shoots off or whatever. <laughs> uh, but this one had the head that was at the it was Showtime uh, Beetlejuice, mm -hmm. and it had the kind of carousel head. Uh, yep. If you had the uh, one where he was in his wedding suit, you got the more normal uh, Beetlejuice head. And it always ticked me off as a kid that it didn't come that way, but I just got both figures and then, you know, put the the more normal uh, Beetlejuice head on the figure. But uh, so, yeah, a lot of fond memories with the Beetlejuice toys. Uh, I don't think I ever got any of the vehicles. It was really just the figures and then the little graveyard set um, was was a big, big fan of these um, when they came out. It was it like 1990 or whatever? Mm -hmm. But uh, Beetlejuice, my number five very good we all beetlejuice is big in at halloween for me as well i've already i've watched it three times so far oh since wow the beginning of the month okay all right i haven't gotten to it yet we've been uh with the kids now i do more kitty stuff but it's mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> all right my next one it's it's not so much um figure related as mm -hmm. as much as it is music related mm-hmm and for me, that is Super 7's Crimson Ghost or Fiend, whatever you want to refer it as, um, figures. And all of the card work, card artwork, is based on albums or singles. Mm -hmm. So that's the Earth AD cover. That would have been on the, the single. Um, you know, this one is just sort of a basic. They did a black one and a red one. Mm hmm but um the figure itself or the character itself the the fiend it's based on a 1940 serials series um called the crimson ghost mm -hmm. and it looked just like that but the i think one of the coolest things about this series is there's a, a sculptor and a um like a custom figure maker like a one-off figure maker called mm -hmm. bees richards and he actually did one of these figures and did his own card back and everything to resemble the um the universal monsters remco figures and brian flynn from super seven like thought that it was it was so good he said can we just use that like we're going to make one of these figures can we just use yours oh, and, and just cool. produce it so that was the very first one and it was a um it was either san diego or comic-con exclusive mm -hmm. and they <laughs> it really sucks for the for a bees richards because it was mistakenly his name was supposed to be on the back of the, the package. Yeah. And like, you know, you know, in perpetuity, you know, it was like every time they redid that back card back and somewhere in the design, they left it off, you know, at legitimately it was a mistake. Uh huh. And he, he took it in stride, you know, he was, he was okay with it, but it was also kind of like a bummer and that super seven apologized, you know, up and down. Yeah. 
Um, but it was cool to have like, you know, a legitimate, like sort of one-off toy maker mm -hmm. have something he done, you know, just for fun, get mass produced. And now it's been, yeah. you know, they've done, there is actually a Halloween one. There's a, there's uh, a misfit song called Halloween mm -hmm. and the, the card art has a giant you know, sort of super distorted pumpkin on it or jack-o'-lantern. Mm -hmm. I love them. I, these figures are fantastic, even though it's all the same figure, just repainted. <laughs> Uh, great band. Uh, give me a Glenn Danzig and Jerry only ultimates figure. Oh, that, that'd be a cool. Ultimate. That would be my see. Like I, 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 uh, floated the idea to, um, to Brian at, at uh power con mm -hmm. where the misfits box set, the, the album box set, mm -hmm. it's a, it's shaped like a coffin. Yeah. And I said to him, like, they should, you should do a, an ultimate box set shaped as coffins with all the figures in it you know oh, with with yeah with glenn with jerry yep. um with doyle because he's sort of an og member and with the current uh mm -hmm. original lineup they just have to figure out which drummer because they went through him like you know every 10 minutes yep yep ah <laughs> uh, yeah but that'd be cool it would be so that's my that's my number two my second pick that's anyway pick. that's a really good pick um uh following up here on the chat uh how long must we wait to, for super seven tackle proper figures based on the beetlejuice cartoon yeah it's kind of crazy uh good call out damn dash uh we've never gotten toys for the cartoon for beetlejuice i love that cartoon it's really fun it's kind of a weird it's a weird twist because beetlejuice becomes just like the friend of lydia yeah so, um but it's still I think the closest fun. thing is those burger king ones yeah yeah um so those would be cool uh better fi uh, feeling film says i mean we're getting a king diamond multiple king diamonds yeah the ghost we're getting L lemmy you know the punk guy from rancid everything it's just i don't think glenn wants his face on a figure or he wants too much money <laughs> it's official Got the set. <laughs> All right. Uh, my number four uh, is I remember getting this figure when it was released. Uh, and I remember, again, I'm not a fan of scary movies, but because I got this figure, I was like, All right, I need to see this film that it's kind of based on. And uh, I was scared the whole time, but I lived through it. And then I became like a genuine big fan uh, of this series, uh, the, the movies, as well as these toys. Um, and the, the one that started all for me. Uh, and I remember my, my dad, we went and picked it out, uh, was the alien queen from uh, Kenner's alien line. And, you know, again, as, as a kid and a kid, especially didn't like scary movies, this thing was like, you know, was it circa 92 or whatever? This is a pretty scary mm -hmm. figure. Um, and like just the, the, uh, the mouth, the inside <laughs> kind of action, uh, mm -hmm. just like, creeped me out. And then again, it didn't even really look like the alien queen in the movie, but all these extra hands and the little hands there and, um, and the, the, the big tail. Um, th to me, this was like, you know, a horror figure, <laughs> this, this monster of a figure, um, that, was really the reason that I really got into the alien films as a kid and watched all of them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this one is just a, a favorite of mine and, and that original Kenner aliens line will always have a, a place in my heart. It's a great figure. It really is. And that was, that was one that I wanted when I was a kid, you know, and I just never, never got it. You know, I ended up, I would see it and then I would pick something else. Like I picked the gorilla alien. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this was the first one, and then I then I got more after that. But this is the first one we got. I remember, I believe it was at comics and stuff uh, in uh, North County. Uh, I think it's called North County Fair. Was the mall uh, in uh, North County, San Diego? Um, but uh, yeah, I remember getting it. I was just like, oh, so cool. But anyway, all right, Alien Queen, great pick. Number four. Uh, let's see. Uh, good memories from that toy line. Designers took excellent liberties with the Xenomorphs. Yeah, again, it's a safe for. Um, was it a scorpion or one of them that looks a lot like the uh, warrior aliens from? Mm -hmm. aliens. But other than that, they're kind of just their own thing, which is fun. Um, 
Let's see. Jager says, we're getting Back to the Future cartoon figures. We should have Beetlejuice too. Yeah, even more so than the Back to the Future cartoon. Again, I love the Back to the Future cartoon um, as a kid, uh, but still prefer to watch the movies. But Beetlejuice cartoon, I think, is a better one than Back to the Future. So absolutely would love to see that. Um, let's see. Uh, better for the, I think is this in reference to Danzig? Uh, Danzig, yeah. He made a film called Veronica that I have yet to see, but yeah, he <laughs> he's not described not it well. <laughs> um, uh, BDF says it's in the next wave, not sure release date, but not currently out as far as I know. The Toonie Terrors Beetlejuice looks great. Um, oh, yes, but that one doesn't that one's not like straight up like the cartoon, though. It's just kind of a cartoony Beetlejuice, yeah. Um, so still not 100% there. Um, all right, John, what's your number three? Number three? I'm going to grab them here. Oh, you got them. Okay, hold on. Yep. Little oh, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Little Sam from Trick or Treat, the new NECA Ultimates. It is such a great figure. Have You, you haven't seen Trick or Treat, right? Nope. Is, that, it, that, is it like a horror comedy kind of thing, or is it? It's up horror. Um, yeah, it's it's horror comedy, but it's it's gory horror comedy. Yeah, but it it it's worth it. You know, yeah, it's de it's definitely worth it. And this guy's so, has such a personality in the movie, and you don't even see like him without his his uh you know burlap sack head on until mm -hmm. towards the end. Yeah, um, because you actually do think that this is his head. You know, the the sack. Yeah, but the the accessories that they included with him. Are fantastic the light up jack-o-lantern the the, the mm -hmm. one that doesn't light up all the the heads the hands the candy bar mm -hmm. his um popsicle thing you know and it actually fits in his mouth to make it look like he's eating it oh my god that's, that's awesome great figure and if you missed out on the um the older ones because they did a couple others and they just they got really expensive like the cult mm -hmm. classic one but yeah. getting him for 30 bucks super deal with all the stuff that he comes with. Yeah. I mean, all the accessories, when you look at them, uh, look really, really cool. Um, and then I think you showed it, I think you had, this was your, in your toy hall last week, but, uh, yeah. pumpkin, the led little light for the flames to come out of it. Right. Yep. Uh, that's just a really it there. Here. Yeah. I got it right here. It's hard to see that it's lit up right there, but yeah, it's on fire. <laughs> perfect for the halloween season that's, that's <laughs> right there um let's see uh trick or treat was an unexpected breakout film good and candy for halloween movie marathons absolutely it was one of those movies that you you didn't really expect the uh the mark it was going to leave on you that you were going to want to watch it every single halloween mm -hmm. for the rest of your life after you've seen it it's it's that's high praise it's so good yeah um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's some that I, again, I do it. I watch them reluctantly. Luckily, my wife also doesn't like scary movies. She doesn't like getting, getting scared even more than me. Um, but, uh, I, I do watch them time because I do have friends that really dig, uh, the horror films, but every time just like, I don't know, I'm a scaredy cat. I, I watched, uh, what was it? Uh, summer camp, sleepaway camp, sleepaway camp. And the end of that movie is just like. <laughs> hard in my brain why why do we watch this stuff it's not even fun um but anyway uh <laughs> uh cp eyed robot a saturday morning kids cartoon based on aliens would have blown my mind as a kid uh i mean they did a bunch of other radar stuff why not aliens you know yeah they would you know the the acid you know when the acid spits out it would you know you just wouldn't see the flesh so much because it's yeah. a cartoon <laughs> well, they'd have those, like robot army guys that you could throw the acid on, like they did like all the time. Like, oh yeah, soldiers were robots, so they could just like keep killing them. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, uh, ordinary Joe seventy nine says, did you mention what your Halloween costume is this year? Uh, I'll share mine. A few. I've had a Ghostbusters costume for a while. Actually, I wore it when I reviewed the Spanglers Neutrona one. Uh, and when Zach was only six months old, we had Ghostbuster family. He was Stay Puff. And then my youngest, Alex, has become obsessed with Ghostbusters, so he wanted to be Stay Puft this year. 
Um, so we're all doing kind of the Ghostbusters thing again this year. Really easy for me because I already have the costume stuff. I just put it on. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, any costumes for you? Because I guess, you know, there's not any Halloween parties to go to. So probably. No, don't, I haven't dressed up for Halloween in a few years. Um, the last thing I did, as like I said, last episode was I, I went as Quint from Jaws. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've got pretty much the same outfit that he starts out in with the Korean War jacket, everything. Mm-hmm. I shaved to look just like him. Mm-hmm. I was gonna do it, but <laughs> I wore this is an old shirt. This is when Hot Topic first made Ghostbusters shirts in '99 or 2000, and I and I bought this is a glow in the dark Slimer shirt, but it was black, and now it's gotten the old T-shirt where it's kind of a gray black now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I'm wearing in honor of our Halloween episode today. Okay, uh, Pumpkinhead was a cool movie. Wish Decca would do a figure from that movie. I love Pumpkinhead. I would just make uh, getting licensing for it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but PDF says McFarlane made a great pumpkin head fig back in the day. NECA did do a pumpkin head figure in the cult classic series. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty rare to find. So we'll just make another one. Re-release it. Just like they did with Trick or Treat, right? Or was Trick or Treat McFarlane? I, I can't keep track of it. Uh, Trick or Treat was NECA. Okay. So it's possible. Wait, well, hold on. So you're telling me there's a chance. All right. Uh, my next pick. Mm, all right, I think I'm going to go this. I'm going to go. I'm, this, this is kind of close between three and two for me. Uh, but I had to pick one from Ghostbusters because obviously. And uh, this one, I was trying to think of maybe one of the scarier ghosts or just one of the cooler ghosts. And um, I went with the bug eye ghost. Uh, from Kenner's Real Ghostbusters toy line. Uh, this one, again, all of those, that first wave of ghosts like that were just unique uh, characters for the line mm-hmm. were great. Bad to the Bone, H2O Ghost, and uh, Bug Eye Ghost are just... And again, I think we've all thought Hasbro was going to re-release this figure with how much they talked about this uh, toy. Uh, but it's just, it's really neat. It's very grotesque. And um, the popping out eyeball which is always really cool. Um, and again, kind of grotesque. I love the neon green string. Um, mine is not really soft anymore, so it doesn't really pop out like it did when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, but uh, overall, and then also you have the hidden face in the back of the figure, Yep. Um, which is a cool little sculpting detail. Uh, but again, just a really neat, scary looking ghost and you know earlier on for all the ghosts i think they just looked more menacing and had some cooler uh more detailed sculpting um but if you're looking for a cool ghost look no further than the bug eye ghost (laughs) it would be so easy for for hasbro to do that figure now it's you know sculpt over what they did with a slimer Mm -hmm. and because it you know the arms are sort of in the same yep position you know not a lot of tooling a ball and a string Yep. And um, again, since most of the plastic is hardened for all of these, um, the the push action pop out eye doesn't really work anymore. Um, so yeah, it could be cool to have like a fresh one that could that could do the <laughs> eye pop mechanism. Um, but again, like for a kid's toy, uh, it's kind of a grotesque. I almost did fearsome fearsome flesh is a fun one as well. But uh, yeah, bug eye ghosts, my number three. Cool. All right, my number four. Is the 1979 Remco Universal Monsters. Great toy line. Awesome. It was, you know, I I don't have any, of course. (laughs) But it's, it it was like the first time, you know, like sort of kid friendly, you know, like they did the Mego style figures back then. Yep. Um, But when four inch or three and three quarter was like really ramping up in popularity Mm -hmm. and getting these out there, you know, it's, it's introducing kids, this, this, uh, you know, lineage of characters that had been around since, you know, for, for 50 years. Yeah. And kids not being familiar with them. You know, I don't, I wouldn't think, you know, a kid in 1979, that's, you know, five years old is going to hunt down an old mummy V8 or wouldn't even be VHS. You got to go to like an eight millimeter. Yeah, it would just be what on TV, right? They're, yeah. Or, or re-releasing the movies in theaters, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it was, you know, 
anything that's universal monsters that's aimed at kids like to get that you know to keep it going like yeah. I, I thought was so great even though i wasn't even around in 1979 yeah. but the they did them all with the glow in the dark features you know yep. they, they really they really did a good job with those and then having the the burger king ones done which are pretty identical from what i remember mm -hmm. they're close so if, you, if you're looking for an affordable set because these guys yeah. are expensive um, mm -hmm. If you're looking for an affordable set, Burger King did premiums where, where they're essentially the same things with Burger King markings instead of Remco. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I love about this line is that 79 or 78, somewhere around there. So it's mm -hmm. it's peak. Uh, they're kind of scales similar in, in similar five points of articulation to like the Star Wars figures. Um, but the sculpting was light years above what Kenner was doing with Star Wars. Like these look like the actors that played them was it boris carl court karloff did um did he do the mummy um yes yeah boris karloff was the mummy and it, it looks like him in the film like with the makeup on like the the, the sculpting is fantastic yeah on, like on. you know this is it's only two years after you know star wars stuff is being sculpted yeah you know where were these guys you know, for, for Luke Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These look like they did in their movies from mm -hmm. the thirties, forties or whatever fifties. And yeah, like they look amazing compared now again, I love Kenner star Wars. I feel like that's part of the appeal and kind of the art of those old school Kenner figures. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not saying it like I don't like them, but still, like the this I, the one I think underappreciated aspect of these, they look fantastic for the era that they were in. Uh, and the the card art on those figures, oh, yeah, is amazing as well. Yep. If 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 anybody hasn't seen the card art for these guys, check it out. It's sort of, it's so artsy, mm -hmm. you know, for for a kid toy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a carded glow in the dark creature in the black lagoon at some point. Um, but then I sold it because I what was I going to do with it? I yeah, never I it. I get you. <laughs> That's why I, I had a bunch of the glow. I had a almost full set of glow in the dark loose ones. Um, mm -hmm. And I sold them because they, why not? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, ordinary Joe says, wow, those are awesome. Agreed. Um, look at the web fingers on the gill, man. That's great. Uh, yeah. It's getting great sculpts. They look fantastic. Um, classic action figures. They look, those look great. Similar to the reaction line, like reaction line still pales in comparison, I think to what, yeah. They did mm -hmm. four years earlier. There, there probably wouldn't be reaction figures without those Remco figures. I mean, I, I know they're similar to Star Wars, mm -hmm. but it, you know, the the Universal Monsters Remco figures was sort of the first, you know, first try at something out of the box. You mm -hmm. know, let you know. Yeah. That's probably why they're hard to find today, because I don't know how well they sold back then. They I you know, they probably did. They because they were I don't know. I always feel like I see him in Sears wish list stuff, and I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I was I wasn't alive then, so I, I can't say one way or the other. Um, Chris Penn in the chat. Chris from the Dominican Republic. And humanoids are awesome. Tendril is sick. <sighs> tendril. I was thinking about him. I've got I've got a long tooth tendril up there. Um, because he he's a great one too for sure, no doubt. Uh, but um, by the way, awesome program this evening. You guys are doing well. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Um, all right. Is it my number two? It's my number two, right? Okay. Yep. All right. So this one, uh, I was thinking I kind of want to have some TMNT representation because there's some really, there's some really kind of grotesque figures, uh, on the TMNT line. Uh, so then it was like, it came down. Okay. What in, at least from when I was a kid, like what one was really gross and uh for me it was always mutagen man uh i just remember getting him as a kid and the the disembodied uh brain with the eyeballs and the organs and stuff like that on the inside was such a head trip to me mm -hmm. a, you know a, an under 10 year old child with a toy <laughs> <laughs> and you put the pieces in there and fill it with water yeah. Yes, and then the, it would just like slush around, and um, and then even his arms, where it's like his muscles were coming through, uh, the skin was like ripping through. Uh, it was just such a gross, 
um, disgusting figure <laughs> that somehow like was a, a little kid's toy. <laughs> you know, like, it was, <laughs> you know, five year olds are getting this toy, and it's just, it's a really gross but amazing figure. It's it's one of my favorites. Uh, from the original toy line, it's in wave two of I think it's wave two of Super Sevens, mm -hmm. uh, MNT Ultimates. So really excited for that, but just just a crazy crazy uh, figure and kind of like what made TMNT special in the late eighties early nineties was like crazy figures like this guy. So um, definitely my pick on the TMNT side of things. He was definitely one of my favorites as a kid. And we had talked about it earlier, or not earlier, but another episode where all the turtle figures, you know, I, w I wasn't really huge on the turtles themselves. Mm -hmm. Like all of the off the wall, you know, usually villain characters mm -hmm. were, that was my jam. You know, Mutagen Man was like my go-to figure. You know, you, like, you, you know, you bring a toy with you when you're a kid, anywhere you're going, you know, yeah, he, he was one of them. And I'd like to find a good one now. It's so hard to find them without a broken arm. Yep, or broken leg because that clear plastic. Exactly. This this has gotten brittle over time, um, which is the case for a lot of vintage TMNT. The whatever that tree is of plastic that connects the, mm -hmm. the points to uh, is a is a weak point on these. But yeah, great fig. Uh, mine I do not keep water in it. And then this one I got. Uh, this is not my original one from when I was a kid. All I have left is the center piece. Like the arms are gone. Everything is just. The <laughs> um. But uh, but this one came with the little things you put inside still on the little plastic tree. So, oh, really? Uh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know where I got this one. But um, back when you could get TMNT figures for dirt cheap in the 2000s, yeah. uh, I think I bought most of them for five to ten bucks a piece or get a big lot, which is a whole bunch of them. Um, but, you know, TMNT is one of the few lines where I have most of my childhood survivors um, and I was able to at least get the accessories back because, like, I have all my soft head turtles um, because in that video I posted, I posted pictures of me getting the soft head turtles for Christmas or my birthday or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and I still have those figures. So it's kind of cool. And, um, it's one of the few ones where I have like pictures of me getting it and I still have that toy. Um, that's awesome. Most of my toys I beat the crap out of and they just, <laughs> but, uh, the turtles survive. So they were, they're well-made toys. Um, going back to the chat, old school Shinobi. I haven't seen you in a minute. Old school. Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, all. Sorry, I missed this. Would have liked to have seen the scary toys. Uh, John's have been scary. Mine have been barely scary. <laughs> I would gladly admit that. Uh, Todd Smith, General Craig's going. General Craig's great. Um, old school says I had those Rumco monster figs as a kid, but sold them on eBay years ago. Had a figure carry case which doubles a full. Yes, yes. A figure yep. carry case that had the mm -hmm. Haunted Mad Laboratory. Just as much an essential part of collecting that toy line as well. It's a really, really cool uh, setup if you have not seen it. Uh, Sleepy Eyed Robot Mutant Man made me kind of sick to look at it. It made me love it even more. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. Like if you just look into like all the like his lungs and heart and intestines, and he has one kidney and <laughs> so gross. So gross. <laughs> um, uh, General Tech is a good one too for Team Bug on his arm. Yep, for sure, Todd. Uh, and Muckman is a close one to Mugen. Yeah, Muckman was another one. Just the way you'd pour the ooze in through his head and come out of his mouth. Um, really cool. And again, that Super 7 Muckman. Woo! Looks amazing. Just like the horsemen. They're just like, if you're going to have him do one of those types of figures, it's going to be amazing. Um, and now, friend of the show, Nate Barch, also uh, uh, designed the toy as well. So we know it's going to be great. You know, I always imagine the Mutagen Man. Uh, I'm not Mugen Man, Muck Man. When I was a kid, that hole in his chest, mm -hmm. <laughs> I always figured he got shot. <laughs> oh, how, how else? How else would a hole get put that way through him? I know that it's both. You know, it's a hole for the slime. Yeah, but in you know continuity or or whatever, how did that get there in the first place? Because it's like yep. perfectly round. Yep, totally, totally. Uh, old school Shinobi. Sorry, I've been around much. Been doing some volunteer work for the DNC. Been catching up the streams when I can. Totally get old school. Uh, I right. have been phone banking as well for uh, Beto's thing in Texas. So totally, totally get it. Uh, and uh, Ordinary Joe 79, hit that like button. Indeed, hit the like button. It's important. It's how YouTube will then show it to people. 
<laughs> a pretty strict <laughs> algorithm with these things sometimes. Um, but anywho, all right. Uh, is it your number five? Yep. Like last one. All right. Last one. Again, I don't have them. And again, TMNT series two universal monsters man what i would i should i wish i would have bought this line when it wasn't that expensive and they are they are stupid expensive now i know for, for series know. two but the the invisible man mikey ah oh, mm -hmm. it's so cool the, they they pulled off that translucent so well it like oh. it looks better than a lot of translucent figures I know that are that are solid translucent like that. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that they did a metal, let metal Luda mutant of, you know, of anything, you know, because that's, that's so like off topic yes. for, for anything. And if anybody out there that doesn't know what it is, it's from um, this Island earth. It's a movie from the fifties. So, you know, that the fact that they, that they put that out there, you know, on Raphael, and you know, expected kids to know <laughs> know what it was, but it's such a great design character with the crazy brain exposed yeah. and the claw hands and then the claw feet. I'm kind of a sucker for the Metalitum mutant to begin with in yep. in any you know form. Mm -hmm. But they they pulled it off so awesome. And doing the the bride of Frankenstein, April. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. And the the creature Leo, if yep. anybody has ever had him loose, awesome figure. This this wave blows away wave one. Oh all yeah, day long. absolutely, absolutely. Like again, like pulling up the pictures because it's easy to be like, I don't need this when I'm not looking at it, right? Mm -hmm. like, I don't need it. I know it's expensive. I'm not going to like worry about it because I, I it's it's a specialty kind of thing. I did. I wasn't really into the specialty turtles all that much. Eventually, by this point, ninety two, I definitely wasn't. Um, but gosh, and then I see this picture. I'm like, well, let me just check on eBay and see how much these <laughs> are right now. Actually, let's let's do a little <laughs> let's do a little wayfinding here. Let's see how much these are on the old uh, on the old <laughs> internets. Um, where is it at here? I'm gonna say. Creature Leo has got to be, they got to be like a hundred bucks a piece loose. That's, that's my guess. I haven't, I haven't looked at these in a long, long time to, to see what the prices are. TMNT uh, Universal Monsters. Yep. There's a whole bunch, but they're incomplete. Here's a carded one got 23 hours left that's not that's, that's not bad now again we'll see where let's go to sold where i'm not even i'm not gonna look at what's being bid on right now we need to see how much it's going for right now frankenstein mikey was 104 uh this just loose uh with including the mutant uh raphael 110 bucks for a carded one that's pretty good. That's really good. I'd take that deal. But I'd open it. I don't want it carded. Yeah. So like this one looks like it was open from the card uh, for the creature, uh, Leonardo. Was it uh, 120? Is that what that says? Yep. Ah, oh, that invisible man Michelangelo, though, 205 bucks. So that might, maybe that's the most expensive one out of that set. That stings a little. Why? Have you had a few? I've only had one. One time. Oh, it's so cool. That's such a cool fig. I mean, the whole, to your point, the whole line is great. And the more I look at it now, I'm like, oh, nope, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Don't need it. I'm really hoping that Super 7 does it. Does some of these characters like that. Yes, perfect. Super 7, do that. <laughs> Nate, if you're listening. <laughs> Nate Barch, Wave 5. <laughs> Universal box set. They need us. To, they need us to sequence it though to like when it'll release in October. Now again, that's like a year ahead of that. But like if somehow mm -hmm. they time that just right, that would be amazing. Uh, Old school Shinobi says, "Wow, check those out. Never saw these before." Uh, yeah, series two is like the the not as well known set from there, um, and it is the best one. Totally with mm -hmm. 
Um, um, sleepy eye to robot. I feel the pain of not having pickups up when I could. Too pricey for me to get any of them now. Totally get it. Um, old school Shumbay, I was just telling my lady earlier now, uh, no matter how often I look at a lot on eBay, I still find figures I've never seen. It's true. Yep. It's true. Uh, damned Ash Grails. Totally. Um, and they ain't cheap grails too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so little time. Uh, release them for next Halloween. Exactly. Like, uh, we'll, we'll, let's bring Nate Barch on. Let's call him up right now and be like, hey, Nate, I know you we're probably start, don't have any. Yeah, we're starting a petition. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Halloween. We want this set. It's four figures, just like the, what they're doing. Yeah. They'd but it's a perfect a wave. Thing, thing to Universal. It's it'd probably a tough, a tough thing because you have to get licensing for Universal and TMNT. Well, Super 7 has both licenses. Because they do the reaction figures. Two birds, like, one stone. I like where your head's at. Uh, there is a Leo Lagoon on eBay for two twenty. Uh, I want a Knight of the Lepus Giant Usagi Yojimbo. Um, I don't know that one. Me either. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, all right. Is it is it my turn for my number one? Yep. My number one. Featured on the thumbnail for the art, so it's not a surprise. But Scareglow! Now, I have a vintage Scareglow. You've seen it in my Scareglow review video, but since it's like $7,000 now, I don't like holding it. It's the Origins one. Um, and, uh, yeah, just... It's... It's, uh, to me, the most Halloween, non-Halloween figure ever made, because it's a skeleton. It glows... Mm -hmm dark it has even though somebody mentioned on the review uh, it's a halberd actually it's like i know but they call it the scythe of doom yep. uh, and um it's purple which is a halloween color has the purple cape uh so yeah uh, it's i don't know to me it's always the coolest spooky figure ever it really is and you could put them out and if like you had halloween decorations like out on like your mantle or something it would go perfect I know it, it, it could be a Halloween decoration. And again, since the original figure was, is pretty rare and kind of stupid expensive at this point. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully there's plenty of these Motu origins ones. So I, you can buy several and have them put around. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be. I'm sure that there's going to be plenty of them. Yes. But of course, Walmart with their pre-orders again have delayed their stuff. <laughs> Why do we even pre-order from Walmart anymore, people? Hey, there it is. Yeah. The classic. classics though. Um is, is that my one that uh, traded to you? It could be. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> there, there's been so many through the through here now. Yeah. <laughs> Um uh yeah, the, the the classics one is great too. Um and the thing that made the classics one super special was the little uh uh key. Yeah, the gray, the, gray skull, uh, the gray skull. The gray skull side door key. Yeah, which is really cool. Um but yeah, scare glow. A dope, dope Halloween figure. My yep, there it is. Tiny, tiny little skeleton key. Um God, they gotta do it. They gotta do a gray skull man in Motu Origins. I bet they will. It, it was it was so successful, you know. Yep. It's yep. Such a good idea. Um, going to the chat. Uh, classic action figures. The new Scare Glow looks amazing. It really, it, they did a great job. It, paint apps aside, the paint apps at least on mine were a little weak, um, but still the figure's great. The glow in the dark is amazing. Um, if you see my video, like even comparing it to the uh, WWE Undertaker one, like this thing could light up your room. That's how mm -hmm. it is. Um, just did Nuclear. It, 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 it's like the most glowy, glow-in-the-dark figure I've ever owned. <laughs> um, so I don't know whatever they did with the mix on this one, but it's fantastic. Um, old school show be scary. always reminds me of a lost member of a punk band, The Misfits. You know, I yeah. Yeah. I totally he, see that. He could have been the other mascot other than The Fiend. Um, sleep ride robot. The, at least I can at least settle for the Mega Block Scareglow. Love this guy. It's practically made for Halloween. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> That's worth a shame that it, the production got delayed because it was supposed to hit this month. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Who knows if we'll get him in time for Halloween this year. Uh, turn off the lights. Let's see him glow. It's too much of a production to get all these lights off in here. But if you do want to see it glow in the dark, check out my review of the scare glow. I have black light video with it, which looks cool. And then just straight up glow in the dark. Um, yeah, let's see the glow. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's here, I'll just I'll just pull up my own video. How about that? Give them what they want. I'll play that game. <laughs> I'll give myself another view. Um, it is unbelievable how much it glows. If it's <laughs> insane, insane. All right, let's go. You, to can, it. you can use it as a nightlight. You really can. And again, I have a nice Motu Origins playlist if you want to see all of the reviews. <laughs> Hear me again. You're already hearing me now. Thank you, Google Fiber. I used to work for you. Not anymore. All right. Uh, skip trial. Thanks. Let's go to... Look at that. Mm. That's with the black light. Let's... Uh, let's... I think I start showing glow in the dark in a second here. Yeah, there we go. Let's get to the goods. Mm, look at that. It makes the paint like the paint lines are so perfect. It glows around them so well. Yeah. Yep. Um, and again, shooting anything with the lights completely off and the sensors for the camera being able to pick up the light well in the pitch black mm-hmm. really hard. So again, just showing the comparison there. And so that's why I have the black light usually for glow in the dark stuff, just because it's it's hard to film glow in the dark stuff sometimes. But it was so bright that it clearly picked up on all the sensors on my cameras, uh, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, looks freaking cool. Uh, and yeah, really, really good Halloween figure. If you want to see the full review, though, go check it out on the channel. Oh, there's with the vintage one. Yeah, so even comparing it to the vintage scare glow. When the lights went down. This was with the black light. Um, which was kind of cool with the vintage one. The purple cape really shined. Yeah. In the dark, which was cool. Um, but again, here's the with the vintage scare glow and the, like showing how much more glowy the new one is versus the vintage. Now again, the vintage is, I don't know, almost 40 years old, 35 years old. So uh, it may have lost a step in terms of it's glowing, but still <laughs> uh, like it's just, it's, it is nuclear in terms of it's glowingness. Um, but yeah, scare glow. Uh, and for those, ad- I think somebody asked in the chat, how did you get one? Uh, I was lucky enough to pick up one that, uh, cause they're, they're in Europe. Wave two has been in Europe for a while. It's also been mm-hmm. in Canada. It's in Mexico. It's in everywhere but the United States. So, yep. um, uh, it's so hopefully we'll be getting it soon. But I got a European car back variant. I have a Canadian version of Orco that was supposed to be here, but uh, the Greensboro Sorting Center uh, is one of the worst delayed mail post office in the country right now. So, <laughs> uh, it's been in Greensboro for a week, and hopefully it'll get here eventually uh, because international orders. I got it from Canada. Uh, they're just like, ah, we'll get to it maybe after the election. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which trap, trap draw many faces are showing up from Canada too. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been trying to keep an eye. I try to keep an eye if, if like the shipping's low. Um, cause again, sometimes, uh, cause there's, I, I probably could have gotten them all in Europe, but they're charging like $80 shipping. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Um, but again, if you're going like normal, uh, mail from Canada, it is snail mail. And again, it's fine. Like, you know, post office process all the, the votes first. It's fine. It'll get here when it gets here. There's far more important things than me getting an Orco figure. It'll get here when it gets here. Uh, but uh, anywho, uh, I, yeah, I do hope. Uh, <laughs> School Shinobi. Spooktacular. Uh, that's the night that the lights went out in Eternia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hard to feel in the Halloween spirit this year, so thanks for doing this, guys. Absolutely awesome. Uh, it, it it is it does stink that 2020 has ruined one of the few Saturday Halloweens that we get, but it doesn't mean we can't have some Halloween fun. Uh, the classic scare glow still holds it quite nicely. It really does. I it, again, the reason it's one of the most sought after and kind of stupidly expensive vintage He-Man figures. Mm-hmm. Um, thankfully, I got mine 
for way less than they go for now. If there's no way I would buy one if it was uh, if I didn't have one yet. Um, hopefully, wave two will be like wave one, and Walmart's will be fully stocked. So I I really do like they've said all indications point to them going hard on the and again it's crazy the the big end caps hit the raleigh durham triangle area and there was tons and now there's just kind of scant he-man and skeletors at at the bright creek but there was just so many and they're all gone which is nuts to me yeah um because there was a ton of mm -hmm. those um it's not like most other toy lines now where you get like maybe two shipper boxes of each figure there was a insane amount of all those characters and all that's left in a couple of the my local, local, local walmarts that got the end cap is a couple of skeletors and he-mans that's it that's nuts yeah i've been finding more skeletors left than anything and like my my walmart went through their you know end cap display in a day and that thing was completely full but on top of the end cap being full they had you know the the six spots on the pegs filled as well and when I went this morning, you know, there was like two Skeletors left and one He-Man. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, that's, that's a great sign to me. You know, that means it's probably kids are finally getting them, mm -hmm. you know, not just us. Yep. <laughs> and I mean, remember come um, January 1st, it won't just be Walmart. We'll be able to get them everywhere. CVS, Walgreens, you know, Pep Boys. <laughs> <laughs> wherever oh, i love it i love it yeah um i love and again i love the skeletor he might be one of my favorites in the line just because his face is so and again he's so much fun to play with like with with the boys just kind of doing that uh, uh very uh, uh again because they love those commercials with the skeleton mm -hmm. um but yeah he's just a really cool really cool figure but anyway all right uh that is it uh, oh, let's see. <laughs> we does all about that eighty percent profit. Yeah, you know, it's it's. Uh, I wonder. I really wonder because you know uh, Scott Knight, like so toy you're guru, me there's oh, oops, accidentally hit that button. Uh, <laughs> it's very much like it'll never succeed if whatever. But it, I do feel like I don't know. Like so many of them sold. Yeah, maybe, maybe it will be fine. It feels like it. So we'll see. I'm gonna. I'm going to... So you're telling me there's a chance. I feel like there's a good chance this line's going to be successful. That's that's how I feel about it. Uh, old School Shinobi, Manny, Motu, and Jack. Um, what is that related to? I don't know. What's the reference? Manny, Motu, and Jack. Hmm. But he did say, can I sell Toys R Us? Bless him. I know. Gah. Why? Well, Why? Um, if it's any indication, uh, Mattel had their... Uh, profit share meeting this this week. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Thursday or Friday. Yeah, and it's the highest profit that Mattel has posted in. It was like twenty years for really? for for a quarter. Their highest quarter in 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 years. Yep, I own a very small stake of a profit in <laughs> in a share of Mattel. Um, but yes, that's nuts. It, and it was it was. Um, I want to say it was like a, it was like nine percent, which is incredible for Mattel. Did they um, did they say what was the main driver of that? Nope. Um, you know they tell like the it was sort of a, a generic um, article that went along with it. You know Mattel is the the you know proprietor of Barbie and Hot Wheels, and I'm like no, it's it's because of Masters. I I guarantee it because nothing else would have jumped that much this for them right now. It has. Yeah. It's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. They Obviously. they haven't had any big, you know, there's no big movie. There's no, yeah. you know, nothing, nothing is big in cartoons right now um, from Mattel. Yeah. Huh? Interesting. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, old school. Show me explain it's from pet boys. Uh, dang. My reference was checking out tonight. Pet boys, Manny, Mo, and Jack. Oh, the three. Oh, things. right. Yes. <laughs> it was a good joke. We the did Pep we did Boys. <laughs> uh, weren't they partnering up with some store chain? Uh, oh, yeah. We should craft on to bring back Toys R Us. Toys R Us is back, kind of, mm -hmm. with mall stores. Um, yeah. 
It was like Toys R Us Expresses. Uh, the one I think there's one in Jersey in that new crazy mall in Jersey, which it's right next to New York City. Like if you're driving up, because when we drive up to New York, uh, it's right next to the Giant Stadium off yep. of 95. Uh, mm-hmm. That is that the is that that place that has like water slides and everything yeah. coming out of it? That's yeah, it's in there. Um, really, they have like a roller coaster in there. You see mm-hmm. it off the road, you know. Oh yeah, it's um, it's it's gigantic. It, yeah yeah um and so i kind of but again it's like you really if anybody's traveling through jersey it's just like you just want to get the hell through jersey yeah Mm -hmm. just keep going um anyway all right well that is it for this special halloween episode of toy geeks uh thank you everyone for uh in the chat tonight had a lot of fun uh with all of you uh, I believe there was one other list that somebody put. I think it was PD Dubs. I do want to make sure. I don't think I gave PD Dubs his due. Yeah, he uh, put up his Halloween list. He did. I do want to go. Here we go. PD Dubs. Uh, Spider Gremlin number one. That's a great one. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, number two, Neca Sam three. Um. Oh, sorry, Neca Sam. That's the one you had, right? Yep. Uh, number three, Neca Snake Alien. Another great Kenner Alien. The Snake Alien. Uh, and the neck one was awesome too. Number four, Soda Toys, Killer Clowns figure set. Great movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm sure it's a great movie. Uh, and number five, Monster in My Pocket. Really, that's again, that's more my speed. Uh, great, great toy line, Monster in My Pocket. Uh, we have a good friend that is a big uh, Monster in My Pocket. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but. Uh, Jay Grimace, what's the best part of Jersey? The exit sign. <laughs> Sorry, New Jersey. It, there's actually really beautiful parts in New Jersey, but if you're like driving through on the turnpike, not so much. Yeah, not so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, old school, it's good to have you in the house. We've been missing you, buddy. Uh, uh, glad to, to see you doing well and, and, and fighting the good fights uh, for our country. Uh, classic action figures, awesome live stream. Thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. Safe Super Guy Joe. Uh, our sleepy hide robot. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we will uh, see you all next week, post Halloween. Um, which I don't know if we, oh, uh, Toy Shiz was saying he might want to like come on and join us. Uh, oh, cool. Toy Shiz. Um, well, probably won't be an interview, just hang out and like be a, a third special member guest or something on the show. Um, I have to confirm the time. So, but, but we might have a special. Uh, guest on the program uh, next week for us. So stay tuned for that. Again, we do these shows live Sunday nights at 9 p.m. on youtube.com slash geek dad life. And we post the audio versions on iTunes and everyone's podcasts are sold for free. Just search toy geeks. And uh, until then, hasta luego and goodbye.